Namaste everyone, welcome back. I hope you guys are all doing great and welcome to a video that I am filming for the third freaking time. So the first time when I filmed this video, my camera unfortunately ran out of storage and I had to film the video again. The second time when I filmed it, I wasn't very happy with how I was looking like my hair was all over the place and I asked my family and also a couple of my friends and they also suggested me to reshoot it. So filming this video for the third time and honestly at this point, I <laughs> don't care. I'm gonna put up this video as is even if I'm not looking my best how I usually look in most of my videos. So please bear with me if anything is not in place. But anyway. For today's video, we're going to be talking about style mistakes that I have made in the past. So now you guys know why I did not want to look like a disaster in a video where I tell you guys my styling mistakes that I have made in the past because then it would just defeat the purpose of shooting this video. Anyways, so with all of the banter out of the way, we'll dive right into the video. But before we get started, please don't forget to like, share, subscribe like always. Hit the bell button down there so you're notified every time we have a new upload on the channel. And also don't forget to connect with me on all my social media accounts. And now, without further ado, let's get started. years that I have experimented with fashion and my taste has evolved over the years, I have come to one realization that there's nothing like outdated trends how a lot of uh, us are made to believe because of social media. I'm a strong believer of the fact that there's nothing like an outdated trend if you wear it nicely enough, if you wear it confidently enough, it is going to come across as pleasing to the eye. But what I do want to talk about are outdated clothes, which is clothes that are worn out. For example, there might be a dress or a t-shirt or a top that you really really like but it has worn out, it's almost on the verge of going to the pocha community of your house but you're still holding on to it because it's so comfortable. You might be emotionally attached to it but it's always a good idea to throw out your outdated and worn out clothes and bring in some fresh new clothes. So with that out of the way, I'll talk about the first style mistake that I made for a very very long time and that is, I have all of my notes written over here and uh, that is not buying basics at all, not investing in basic clothes and only buying statement pieces whenever. I would go out and this is something that I have realized in the recent past because now that I have actually started taking fashion very seriously because I have to create content for YouTube and Instagram I have realized that the number of outfits that I can create with basic pieces are actually a lot more however till date whenever I go to the mall my eyes always land up first on something which is very blingy or something which is very fancy and uh, I am trying to work on it I'm trying to stick to my basics and not invest in statement or OTT pieces so much but yeah I'm still a work in progress and if you guys are also like me I would suggest you start building your wardrobe with basics like solid colored t-shirts, tank tops, denim jackets, white and black jeans. Now following up on the same point the case was exactly the opposite when it came to accessories. So whenever I had to buy accessories be it earrings, be it um, footwear I would always invest in only basics. I would never experiment and I think that is the case with all of us. We go out to buy footwear and we'll buy a pair of black heels, a pair of uh, white shoes or anything like that. Something that we know is going to go with so many outfits, so many looks. And also with accessories, for the longest time I only used to wear um, gold and silver hoops. In fact, wow, what, what an irony. I'm literally wearing hoops in this video. But yeah, you guys get my point. I would only invest in hoops and you know, very, very basic jewelry, never experimenting, going out of my comfort zone. But what I have realized lately is that if you have a good pair of footwear that is something a little unusual something that is maybe pink or green or basically a color that you don't see yourself wearing a lot it will actually make your outfit stand out so much it's insane and I have only realized it when I've tried it myself so don't be like me the next time you go out shopping for clothes try sticking to basics because you'll be able to wear a lot of outfits that way and in fact even when it comes to accessories if in case you do not have your basics in place sort them out first but if you want to do something more uh, you can maybe try out uh, something like clay rings. Clay rings have been a hype for such a long time and in fact I made them myself. You don't have to invest 5-600 rupees into like 2 clay rings. I made about 10-15 uh, clay rings in uh, 10 rupees like all of them I made under 10 or 15 rupees. Uh, if you guys want to find out how I made them there's a DIY that I will have linked over here and you guys can check them out for yourself. Uh, and also similarly when it comes to footwear 
try going out of your comfort zone and invest in maybe one or two pairs of footwear, not a lot. And adding some colors to your wardrobe is always a really fun way of breaking your regular dressing cycle. The next time mistake that I found myself making was when oversized clothes had just started becoming the hype. So what I used to do was, I used to pair oversized uh, hoodies or oversized sweatshirts with oversized bottoms as well. So when you pair an oversized top with an oversized bottom, the shape of your body is lost in the loose garment and it makes you look very shabby. So what you do when you want to wear oversized clothing is to balance it out. So an oversized top with a fitted bottom or a fitted top with an oversized bottom. This also keeps you comfortable and at the same time the shape of your body is not lost in the garment. So the balance that this combination strikes is very pleasing to the eye. So remember this rule of thumb with an oversized top you pair a fitted bottom and with a fitted top you go with an oversized bottom and that is how you nail the oversized fashion trend. My third mistake is more of a makeup mistake than a style mistake. So uh, till the time I think I was 22 or 23, I always used to apply kajal on my waterline, on my lower waterline as well. And I realized a while after that, that it tends to make your eyes look smaller than they are. So if that is the kind of look that you are aiming for, something Indian, then you can definitely apply kajal on your upper and lower waterline. It looks beautiful on Indian attires. But if you want to make your eyes look bigger, just apply the eyeliner how you usually do and skip the kajal. It really brings a dramatic difference in your eye shape. So if you are someone who's been sticking to just one way of doing their eye makeup, maybe try switching it up a little and see how applying kajal works for you or applying just eyeliner works for you. And by just changing the way that you usually do your eye makeup, it's going to make a world of difference. Now my next point is more of a hack than uh, a tip or anything of that sort. So every time I would wear an off-shoulder top and I would wave to someone or if I would be dancing, my off-shoulder type top would keep riding up. And it's very irritating when throughout the evening or throughout the day you have to keep tugging on your off-shoulder top to keep it in place. So this is a hack that you guys can try. All you will need are a couple of safety pins and two rubber bands. So pin the rubber band from under your arms on both sides of the off-shoulder top and this will make sure that your sleeve, the off-shoulder sleeve, stays in place throughout. Now after doing this, no matter how much you run around, how much you dance, how much you wave, how much you lift your arms, your top is going to stay in place all day and it's not going to budge whatsoever. So every time you're stepping out and you have second thoughts because you're constantly going to be worried about keeping it in place, try this hack and you will not be able to stop wearing your off-shoulder tops. The next style mistake that I want to draw attention to is not something that I have done but I have seen a lot, a lot of people doing it. What I'm talking about are transparent straps peeking through your strappy tops or off-shoulder tops. The transparent straps are visible in every way and they look so obnoxious. So if you have been doing this, maybe consider going for a strapless bra. You will easily find a lot of affordable options. My favorite one being Zivame. And in fact, if you do not want to go with strapless options, you can just wear your lingerie as is with the regular strap showing. And while we are at the subject of choosing the right lingerie. Another thing that I've seen a lot of people not pay enough attention to are the panty lines showing through their leggings or any tight fitted bottoms. If you're wearing something that has a thicker fabric, for example jeans or maybe a pair of trousers, then it's not something that you have to worry about. But with thinner fabrics, what you can instead do is go for seamless underwear. You'll easily get them again everywhere in your local markets as well. So instead of wearing your regular underwear with these kind of clothes, always, always make it a point that you go for seamless options. And in case you've been doing the things that I'm pointing out, please do not take it personally. We're all here to learn. We're all here to improve ourselves. So just take it as an advice from an elder sister who's just trying to help you. We're all here to help each other out, to learn, to grow and to better ourselves. My sixth style mistake and something that I regret not doing for the longest time is not raiding my dad's closet. Now before I stepped into YouTube, whenever I would have to go out, I would just open my cupboard where whatever was there and step out. But when I started experimenting more with fashion because I had to constantly come up with new ideas for you guys, uh, for one of the videos I remember, the Valentine's video that I did last year, I styled different pieces from my dad's wardrobe in that video and that is when I realized how many options, how many any potential options I had been losing out on because I just did not try my dad's clothes thinking that oh they were oversized and they were not gonna fit me and same was the case with my mom's clothes also my mom usually wears Indian wear so I would never really have a look in her cupboard to see 
if there was anything that I could potentially style. And again, when I started doing it, I realized the amount of possibilities that I was missing out on. So if you stand in front of your cupboard every single day telling yourself that you have nothing to wear, this is your sign to raid your dad's, boyfriend's, um, granddad's, mom's, daddy's, everyone's closets. And also it's super sustainable. So a piece of clothing that your dad is wearing, your mom is also wearing, you are also wearing. So you're getting so many uses out of a clothing and I don't see how this is not a complete win-win situation. Mistake number seven, I guess, I don't know, I've lost count at this point. I think I'm just gonna call it number seven, was not accessorizing and not layering. So I'm gonna talk about accessorizing first. I'm talking about uh, the time when I was a teenager or maybe even in my early 20s. I didn't pay attention to the way I was accessorizing. And accessories don't necessarily mean jewelry, stuff like uh, scarves or even uh, handbags. I never used to carry any of them. It was just the outfit I was wearing and I would walk out of the house just like that. But these things add so much character and life to an outfit if you're wearing maybe a dainty necklace, a couple of earrings, some nice rings, not all of them together but just separately and you've added a scarf to an otherwise plain outfit and bam it is going to transform the whole look. Once I started experimenting with accessories was when I realized how much potential they hold in creating a difference. I'm now talking about the art of layering. Now earlier what I used to do was maybe wear a black turtleneck, match it with a similar black pair of jeans, add a belt and I was done, that, that was my outfit. But now if I were to wear the same thing, I would probably add a scarf to it like I previously said or I would add a waistcoat or a jacket to it or I would uh, layer it under a t-shirt. There are so many permutations and combinations that you can try with these kind of pieces. And also another bonus thing about layering is that especially in winters, it keeps you super warm. So instead of just wearing a plain sweater, layering can actually make you look good number one and number two it can add to multiple layers so you also are warm at the same time so so many of my problems were actually solved when i resorted to layering and accessorizing the right way it's obviously going to be a hit and trial you will have to find out what accessories also work best for you but all right here's a homework for you the next time you step out you will make sure whatever you're wearing you will add any one piece of accessory to it now the accessory will be of your choice but it has to be something that you don't usually wear so maybe a scarf a couple of dainty earrings necklaces or rings maybe a belt that has been sitting in your cupboard for a very long time or even a bag it can be a crossbody bag whatever you guys like best but do add a little extra something that you wouldn't otherwise add if you were going out and once you've tried it you'll become a fan of accessorizing and layering the next time mistake that I want to talk about are socks peeking through your footwear. Now if you're wearing something which is close to like uh, loafers or maybe a pair of sneakers, uh, ballerinas, whatever it is and your socks show through, it does not look very nice but if you're aiming for that sort of a look where the sock showing is actually a part of your outfit then that's absolutely fine. I'm just talking about situations in general. So instead of going for full length regular socks, try going for no show socks that only cover your toes and your ankles. So it does the job of a regular sock but also does not show through whatever you're wearing and why we're talking about footwears something that I've done for half of my life is buying the wrong pair of footwear now by the wrong pair of footwear I mean buying impractical footwear with heels that are four or five inches high which are super uncomfortable and in fact I remember I bought a very beautiful pair of sandals uh, for one of my relatives weddings and I wore it about three times and because they were so uncomfortable, eventually I just had to throw them away because they had started peeling off so I couldn't even wear them again. And it was a waste of money. Now, does that mean that you should absolutely stop buying heels? Definitely not. So what I now do is if I want to wear heels, I invest in block heels because they are comfortable to walk in. And even if I have to go out for a wedding or a function and I'm wearing those heels, my feet are not going to be killing me at the end of the day because block heels are relatively more comfortable than pencil heels. At the same time, if I do want to go for pencil heels, I'll buy ones that have very less heel height. So maybe like 2 or 2.5 inches max. In fact, I bought a pair of footwear from H&M that had really pointy heels but because the heel height is so low, even when I'm hanging out with my friends, I can go out wearing the same pair of shoes. So instead of investing one or two thousand rupees into a pair of stilettos that are going to kill your feet and you are not going to wear for more than three times, go for something that you can wear till the straps come off, the sole gets completely worn out. At least that will be a better way of utilizing your money and being able to wear it as much as you want. Because investing thousand or two thousand rupees for a pair of footwear that you're going to be wearing just three times, is it worth it? 
Ask yourself that question. The next time mistake that I had been making for years was wearing the same color inner wear as uh, my t-shirts or my tops. So if I was wearing say a white t-shirt, I would go for a white inner. If I was wearing a black t-shirt, I would go for a black inner. But I realized that was so, so wrong. So now I always make sure that I go for nude undergarments because wearing white under white, black under black, blue under blue is actually not going to conceal anything. In fact, if there is flash photography happening, your lingerie will actually be visible in the photographs because you'll be wearing it in the same color. What happens when you wear nude colored undergarments is that it gels in with your body color. So the color looks uniform throughout and then it doesn't look like something else that is shining through thinner fabrics. If you're wearing something which is very thick in nature, you can go ahead and wear whatever you like under it. No rules, no restrictions there. You go girl. But when that's not the case, always go for nude undergarments. Also nude undergarments of course will be different for different people because the color of our skin is different. So based on the color of your body, you can go for the nude undergarment accordingly. Moving on to the second last point and I'm almost out of breath here is investing in momentary trends. Now we have to understand that trends are very momentary and if you are investing in a piece just for the sake of a trend, don't do it. It's not worth it. Worth it. I'm saying this from experience because once the trend is gone, you are actually not going to wear the garment anymore. In fact, there is one trend that has been doing the rounds which I find completely impractical, but then again, this is just my opinion, no need to take it personally, is the trend of arm warmers. I never understood what the trend was about because it's a piece of garment that keeps your arm and your neck warm, but then you're cold on the rest of your body. It's not something that you can wear in summers, but also it's not something that you can wear in winters. So I don't see a point in investing something which is so, so momentary and is only going to be there for like one season. In fact, let me paint a picture for you here. Imagine you have a thousand rupees and you invest those thousand rupees in a momentary trend, say the same arm warmers. Now, how about you invest the same thousand rupees into something which is very, very basic and is going to last you for a very long time. Uh, for example, a white shirt. Now, how many times do you think you are going to be wearing the arm warmer? Two times? Okay, three times? And how many times do you think you'll be wearing the white shirt? Till the time the shirt loses its shape, its texture becomes a pocha. That is how long you'll be wearing the shirt for. You'll find a hundred ways of styling the white shirt on the internet, whereas for styling the arm warmer, not so much. Definitely not as much as the white shirt. So what do you think is a better utilization of your thousand rupees? Definitely the white shirt. And this is what I mean by investing in momentary trends. I am not against trends or anything. If there is a trend that you really genuinely like and you see yourself wearing for years to come, then of course you can go ahead and buy whatever you want. But always remember that it's very important to spend your money wisely. My next point is actually a note to my younger self and I do not understand why this girl never wore anything except jeans and t-shirt. I'll tell you there was a point where I was only obsessed with wearing jeans and t-shirt. There's a volunteering event in college, jeans and t-shirt. Going out to meet friends, jeans and t-shirt. Have to go out to run some errands, jeans and t-shirt. I mean, I had completely stopped wearing anything else and while there's nothing wrong in wearing the same jeans and t-shirt, what I never realized is there are so many ways of wearing a simple jeans and t-shirt. Accessorizing, adding a jacket, wearing the same t-shirt over a dress or over a tank top, tucking the t-shirt in, trying a half tuck. There are so many possibilities, but I never tried any of them. So if you're also like me, and if you also want to make a difference, I'll tell you what I did to break the monotony. I went to Pinterest and looked up jeans and t-shirts outfits. And there were so many options that I came across that I could try with my existing clothes, with the existing jeans and t-shirt. And don't get me wrong, I still love wearing jeans and t-shirt. But I always try to do something different with the same pair of jeans and t-shirt. And another thing that I did to play it safe was to not invest in colored bottoms. So even though I had a lot of jeans, like a lot in number, but all of them, literally all of them were blue denims. In fact, I bought my first ever pair of black jeans when I was in my sophomore year in college, my third year, and my first pair of white jeans in 2019. And lately what I have started to do is investing in colored bottoms. A little bit of unusual colors, maybe some something which is green, something which is pink or yellow. And you know, while I'm not someone who would ideally invest in these kind of pieces, 
once I tried them on, I realized that if you're wearing, say, a white t-shirt and a blue pair of jeans, and if you switch up the blue jeans for green jeans, it'll also look very fresh to you because you are not stepping out of your comfort zone, but you are just literally switching up the color of a garment that you already wear. So it's experimenting, but while staying in your comfort zone. Next time you go shopping, go for a color that you usually wouldn't try. And it's going to bring such a fresh change, such a nice change for you, and is such a great way to break the monotony of how you dress every single day without actually changing your style completely. So with that, we have reached the end of this video, guys. I really hope that these tips prove to be helpful to you. I'm not trying to shame anyone. I'm not trying to shade anyone with this video. I just wanted to talk about style mistakes that I had made in the past. And if you, in case, have been making them, if you want to make a couple of changes in the way you dress and you want to learn from my mistakes, the purpose of this video was only to share all of these things with you guys. Most of these tips you guys would have noticed are not about dramatically leaving your comfort zone and completely transforming your style game like that, but little steps towards experimentation while staying in your comfort zone are things that will make a huge difference in your overall style and in case you have been looking for a change to your usual way of dressing. If you do not resonate with these tips, it's absolutely fine. No one is forcing you to follow all of these tips. These are just my opinions, my experiences, and I just wanted to use my platform to help you guys. In all of these years that I have been experimenting with fashion, there have been mistakes that I have made. I have improved upon them. And who knows, maybe five years down the line, something that I do now, I might end up calling it a fashion mistake then. So we're all learning, we're all growing and helping each other out into becoming a better version of ourselves. So with that very long intro, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please don't forget to like, share, subscribe, like always. Tell me in the comments which style mistake of mine was your favorite as if this video wasn't embarrassing enough already. And I'll see you very soon in my next video, which is going to come up next Friday as always. Until then, I'll see you very soon. Bye!